Hi friends, there is again an attempt to make this complicated topic a little easy for you all. Let's see how it can help you. Puberty is a slow process involving several years during which the physical growth and secondary sexual characteristics develop to maturity and the menstruation establish. So that means it's a period which starts with physical growth that is growth spurt and gradually there is formation of secondary sexual characteristics and then at the end there is menarche in females and that's the end point of puberty. Average age is of 12 to 13 years. What happens suddenly? How the pubertal changes that take place? Hypothalamus starts secreting GnRH in a pulsatile form. That's the beginning of puberty. So first thing either there is continuous secretion or that pulsatility is absent. So Hypothalamus secreting GnRH in a pulsatile manner is the beginning. Initially it is during only sleep and later throughout the day. Now this GnRH which is secreted from the hypothalamus it goes and acts on the pituitary and then pituitary secretes follicular stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. This FSH it goes and acts on the granulosa cells of the ovary and there is secretion of estrogen and once there is estrogen the whole cycle begins. So, FSH LH ovaries, secretion of estrogen and growth hormone. Growth hormone leads to growth spurt. That's the first step towards maturity. Estrogen that will act on the breast tissue and thalarchy. Female fat distribution. Vaginal and uterine growth would simultaneously take place. Adrenal androgen will be formed and there would be development of pubic and axillary hair. And this estrogen will cause proliferation of the endometrium and later when there is withdrawal of this hormone there would be menses or menstrual blood will be visibly seen and that is the first menses will lead to menarche. So these are pubertal changes which begin with versatile secretion of GnRH. So let's just have a look. First event is growth spurt which starts and that is the beginning. Then the next is breast development. That thalarchy is from 9 to 11 years. Then pubic hair development, pubarchy. Six months after the thalarchy, it starts. So you can see the time lag. And then this is the breast development. Then after that, there is axillary hair. And this is the development. And at the end, there is first menstrual cycle which is taking place and this is menarche. So this is how puberty progresses. Breast development, Tanner has given us staging by which we have staged the breast development at thalarchy. Stage 1, there is just elevation of papilla. Stage 2, there is elevation of breast and papilla as a small mound and areola increases in diameter. Further, there is enlargement without separation of breast and areola. Then there is development of secondary mound of areola and papilla above the breast and then recession of areola to contour of breast. So this is the tanner 4 and 5 is the complete development of breast. Similarly, even pubic hair development is staged. Stage 1, pre-pubertal, there is no pubic hair. Stage 2, sparse and long pigmented hair mainly along the labia majora. Then dark, coarse and curl hair sparsely spread over mons that is stage 3. Adult type abundant hair but limited to the mons that is stage 4. And adult type spread in quantity and distribution that is stage 5. So gradually over the period of puberty there is thalarchy and pubarchy. There is some problem if the pubertal changes takes place early it is called as precocious puberty. And if it takes place late than the normal age it is called delayed puberty. And the factors and the causes are little complex. So with the following diagrams, we have made it little simple. So understand, precocious puberty, there can be central and or true precocious puberty. The second type is peripheral or also called as pseudo precocious puberty. What are the causes of central proof? There is in central precocious puberty, there is activation of HPO axis early. The whole hypothalamo-pituitary axis which gets activated at the time of puberty gets activated early. That is central or 
true precocious puberty and in peripheral there is no activation of HPO axis. The causes in central this activation leads to breast development, pubic hair development and also there is cyclical bleeding. So at all levels there is formation that is pubarthalarchy, pubarchy and menarche because of early activation of HPO axis. And in pseudo there is breast development, pubic hair development but absent of absence of cyclical vaginal bleeding. It is absent. Usually the central precocious puberty is idiopathic. Most common cause is idiopathic and treatment is in the form of GnRH analogs. Once you give GnRH analogs then there is continuous secretion of GnRH that, that depresses formation of FHH and LH and thus the further changes would be stopped. So till the period you don't want women to have those changes we can give GnRH analogs and menarche can be delayed or menses can be withheld. In case of peripheral or pseudo the causes are usually either ovarian tumors which are estrogen secreting, granulosal cell tumor for example. This is an endogenous source of estrogen and because of this increased amount of estrogen there are other changes like thalarchy and pubarchy taking place because of estrogen but there is no cyclical vaginal bleeding because this estrogen may lead to just proliferation of the endometrium and thus there will not be withdrawal so endogenous or exogenous estrogen will lead to peripheral or pseudo precocious puberty and always the treatment is related with the cause depending on the cause the treatment is done if there is a tumor we have to remove it if the patient is on drugs we have to stop those drugs so causes of central precocious puberty constitutional or idiopathic and specific causes so most common 80% cases it is idiopathic specific causes are seen only in 20% of the cases and let's see what are they usually it is a congenital defect that is hydrocephalus that is the one which cause central precocious puberty there can be acquired lesions mainly infections meningitis encephalitis hypothyroidism are the common reasons or sometimes trauma and head injury may lead to central type of precocious puberty some tumors that is astrocytoma neurofibroma and these tumors they may lead to central type of precocious puberty causes of peripheral precocious puberty they are there are two types one is heterosexual and the other one is isosexual isosexual means the changes would be feminine in heterosexual there would be virilizing changes so in isosexual the causes are ovarian tumors like theca cell or granulosa cell which we have already seen adrenal causes there can be feminizing adrenal neoplasia or there can be choriocarcinoma which secretes there is gonadotrophin secretion dysgerminoma or McCune albright syndrome we will see this syndrome in detail and exogenous estrogen or corticosteroid intake or ossipils given for some other reason these all causes will lead to isosexual type of puberty precocious puberty in heterosexual group there would be virilization there is virilizing changes and the causes are congenital adrenal hyperplasia may be of late onset or exogenous androgens ovarian or adrenal testosterone secreting tumors like hyalus cell, lipoid cell, gynandroblastoma, androblastoma. So ovarian tumor is cause of pseudo or peripheral precocious puberty in both ways. If the tumor is androgen secreting that is hyalus cell or gynandroblastoma or androblastoma then there is secretion of testosterone that will lead to precocious puberty but virilizing signs would be there and that would be heterosexual precocious puberty but the tumor is of granulosa cell estrogen secretion that will lead to isosexual precocious puberty peripheral origin McCune Albright syndrome it's a triad there are certain questions in MCQ on this so let's see what are this this is a GnRH independent isosexual precocity that means peripheral it's not related with GnRH there is irregular cafeolitis spots and there is polyostatic fibrous dysplasia of bone and other associated conditions are acromegaly hyperparathyroidism hyperprolactinemia hypercortisolism and hyperthyroidism 
treatment is GnRH is of no value because it is not dependent on the GnRH. Tamoxifen is used. Delayed puberty is one where the puberty is said to be delayed but secondary sexual characteristics have not appeared by 13 years and menstruation does not appear even at 16 years, 15 to 16 years of age that is delayed puberty and the causes are either they can be chromosomal or constitutional delay or sometimes it is hypogonadotrophic. So in chromosomal the causes are Turner syndrome or there is testicular feminizing syndrome which is a male hermaphrodite there would be delayed puberty. In constitutional delay if the ovaries are streak or there is polycystic ovarian disease then maybe there is constitutional delay in puberty. Uterus may be absent or cryptomenorrhea that is why patient is not having menses and that's delayed puberty. In hypogonadotrophic, whenever we say hypogonadism, there is either thalamic problem or pituitary problem. So what are those problems? Either there is hypothalamic hypopituitarism or congenital some central nervous system defect or empty cell atosica syndrome where the pituitary is necrosed. When we evaluate delayed puberty, we have to see what is the weight of the patient, height, secondary sexual characteristics, whether they are developed or not, and presence or absence of hirsutism. If there is hirsutism present, then directly we come to know that this is isosexual, this is not isosexual, this is heterosexual type of puberty, and we can concentrate on those causes. Once the secondary sexual characteristics are present, they tell us that we have to look, depending on the sexual characteristics, we can divide whether it is heterosexual or isosexual and concentrate on those causes. Karyotyping is an important investigation. Presence of XO directly tells us it's a Turner which we are dealing with. XY, testicular feminizing syndrome. FSH level, if they are high, that suggests ovaries are failing, they are not secreting. So the fault is at ovarian level, that's why FSH levels are high. And the FSH levels are low when there is hypopituitarism. X-ray pituitary fossa will tell us about empty cell atosica syndrome or CT MRI will also tell us about any pituitary tumors. USG will tell us about ovarian structure, whether it is streak or there is presence of PCOD. Uterus is absent and it will also guide us about cryptomenorrhea. If uterus is distended with the collection then and there is block low down, so cryptomenorrhea it is there is menses but there is no visible menstrual blood that is called as cryptomenorrhea. Other hormones like thyroid prolactin estimation will help us to reach some diagnosis and laparoscopy add to the information in the form of uterine size, ovarian presence. So all these things we can confirm on laparoscopy. So this is how we can evaluate delayed puberty. So this was a very concise lecture to just simplify precautions and delayed puberty. We will stop here. Thank you.